The atmosphere in the High Council chamber was weighty, the air itself seeming to hold its breath as Alindra stepped forward. Her gaze remained fixed ahead, steady and unblinking, while the golden sunlit patterns that danced across her olive-green skin caught the chamber's iridescent glow. She was clad in the ceremonial armor of a royal guard, light, efficient, every line and seam polished to mirror the resolve within her. But beneath her calm exterior, Elindra's mind whirred with questions. Rarely did she find herself summoned without warning, let alone by the highest echelons of Varelian authority. The council members, draped in flowing robes that shimmered with embedded tech, regarded her from their elevated seats. The oldest among them, Advisor Nares, leaned forward, her silvered eyes as sharp as steel. Elindra of the Royal Guard, Nares began, her voice carrying a practiced calm. You are hereby assigned to a high-priority mission, a task involving an earthborn human known as Tobias Gray. A ripple of surprise flickered across Elindra's expression. A human. Her mind turned over the implications, each more baffling than the last. Humans were, by Varelian standards, impulsive and unpredictable, a species that her people typically regarded with a blend of intrigue and skepticism. An escort mission, advisor? Elindra's voice was respectful but edged with a hint of incredulity. Escort duties were for initiates and ceremonial guards, not those with her training and rank. Advisor Nares didn't acknowledge Alindra's underlying skepticism, nor did her gaze waver. This is no ordinary assignment, she replied. This Tobias Gray, an entertainer of considerable renown, has been selected as a cultural envoy by Earth's representatives. He will travel the galaxy to promote interspecies goodwill, an effort we support in theory but must protect in practice. Tobias has, it seems, attracted certain adversaries, factions that view his influence as a threat to their less inclusive interests. Elindra's jaw tightened. It wasn't the danger she minded. She was familiar with risk, having faced her share of unpredictable threats on distant moons and contested borders. But the thought of playing bodyguard to a human entertainer felt beneath her station, a misuse of her skills. I will protect him, advisor, she said, her tone hardening with acceptance. Though I admit, I am not familiar with this. Tobias Gray. At that, Advisor Nares almost allowed a hint of a smile to grace her face. You may find him an unexpected challenge, Elindra, she said, her eyes gleaming. The human spirit is more complex than we often give it credit for. Tobias's charm has a peculiar effect on those who meet him. Do not underestimate him, or your own response to his presence. The words lingered uncomfortably as Elindra nodded in acquiescence. She was dismissed with a cool inclination of Nerys's head, and as she turned to leave, she felt an unfamiliar sensation, a small knot of uncertainty, settle in her chest. But Alindra dismissed it, steeling herself as she left the council chamber. Whatever lay ahead, she would handle it with the same professionalism and dedication she had brought to every assignment. Later that day, aboard Tobias's ship, the Celestial Seraph, the docking bay was an odd blend of luxury and function, a glistening stretch of polished metal and ambient lighting softened to a warm, inviting glow. It was quieter than she had expected for a vessel this size, and the silence settled around Alindra as she waited. When she finally heard footsteps approaching, she straightened reflexively, hand resting at her side. Tobias Gray arrived in a blur of casual elegance, a broad smile under slightly disheveled hair, and eyes that sparkled with unguarded curiosity as he approached her. He wore a dark, tailored jacket over a loose shirt, and there was an ease in his stride, a confidence that was both unervingly relaxed and completely unapologetic. You must be Alindra, he greeted her, holding out his hand. I've been told you're the best of the best. She hesitated a fraction of a second before extending her own hand. His grip was warm, firm, and lingered just a little longer than customary. Alindra withdrew quickly, giving a stiff nod. I am here to ensure your safety, Tobias Gray, she replied her voice crisp. My orders are to remain with you, both publicly and privately, for the duration of this journey. He laughed, an easy sound that rang through the bay, and Alindra couldn't help the faint narrowing of her gaze. Then it seems I'm in good hands, he said. Please, call me Tobias. Tobias Grail makes me sound like I'm on trial. Not that I haven't been once or twice. She raised a brow at that, not fully grasping his tone. I would suggest that you take this mission seriously, Tobias. As it stands, 
Threats have been made against your life. My presence here is no formality. A flicker of surprise crossed his face before his expression softened. I didn't mean to make light of it, he said, more seriously now. I appreciate what you're doing. Really? They held each other's gaze for a long, unreadable moment until Tobias broke the silence, his face brightening with a sudden idea. Well then, how about you let me give you a tour? He gestured around the bay with a sweeping arm. I mean, I can't have my personal guard getting lost if things get dicey, can I? Elindra hesitated, then nodded. She would never admit it, but she was intrigued by him in a way she hadn't anticipated. He led her through the ship, a vessel that combined earthly luxury with advanced alien technology, and as they walked, he described everything from the fusion engines to the floating sky lounge where he hosted after parties. His tone was light infused with the confidence of someone who reveled in his own world. This here is the nerve center of the whole ship, he explained, stopping before a wall of intricate controls and monitors that pulsed with energy signatures and surveillance feeds. It's basically an old Earth soundboard mixed with a planetary defense system. Isn't that brilliant? Elindra listened carefully, though her attention was as much on the monitors as it was on his words. She traced the array of controls with her eyes, noting potential entry points, structural vulnerabilities, the locations of emergency escape pods. Tobias was speaking animatedly about a particularly rowdy concert he'd performed on a space station, but she was already mapping out defensive strategies in her mind. Your vessel is impressive, she said at last, her tone as neutral as she could manage. He grinned, sensing her reserve. But you're not impressed by the glitz and glamour, are you? He asked, his eyes dancing with amusement. She shook her head, a faint hint of something almost like a smile tugging at her mouth. No, she replied, I am impressed by practicality and security. Your ship, however, leans more toward display than defense. Ouch, he laughed, clutching his chest as if wounded. Harsh, but fair. I suppose that's why they sent me the best. Before Elindra could reply, a sudden sharp blare sounded through the bay, a proximity alarm. Instantly, her demeanor shifted the easy stroll giving way to readiness as she took a step forward, scanning the monitors for signs of the threat. Tobias's joking tone vanished. What's going on? Stay behind me, she ordered, her voice low and controlled as she moved swiftly toward the main monitor. A small blip appeared on the screen, indicating an unidentified vessel approaching fast, far too fast to be anything friendly. They're not responding to hails, Tobias said, worry creasing his brow as he checked the controls and they're closing in. Fast. Her instincts kicked in. She reached for the ship's defensive controls, activating a low-grade shielding protocol just as the unidentified vessel broke through their outer defenses. A second later, the entire ship jolted with impact, the lights flickering ominously. Get to cover, Elindra commanded, already drawing her weapon. No chance, Tobias retorted, a spark of resolve in his eyes. This is my ship, and I'm not leaving you to deal with it alone. She shot him a look, part irritation, part respect, then pulled him into a secure alcove. With her weapon at the ready, she kept her focus sharp, every sense on high alert as she braced for the inevitable breach. They didn't have to wait long. The doors hissed open, and a group of masked intruders surged through, heavily armored, weapons drawn. Elindra moved without hesitation, her training taking over as she took down the first two with quick, precise shots. Tobias ducked, adrenaline and fascination mingling as he watched her fight, elegant, deadly, like watching poetry in motion. In seconds, the attackers were neutralized, the last one sprawled at her feet, unconscious. Elindra holstered her weapon, casting Tobias a quick, assessing look. Are you unharmed? she asked, her voice steady despite the intensity of the moment. Tobias nodded, still catching his breath. You, you're really something, aren't you? She met his gaze, her golden patterns catching the dim light, her expression unyielding. I'm here to protect you, Tobias Gray, she replied. Whatever that entails. He laughed softly, still in awe, shaking his head. Well, I certainly don't feel like a celebrity anymore. Feels more like I'm in some kind of action vid. He paused, looking at her with an expression both amused and impressed. But if this is what I've signed up for, I'm glad it's with you. Elindra held his gaze, feeling the slight shift between them, as if some unspoken understanding had been forged in those few chaotic moments. 
She would have time later to analyze this unusual assignment, to dissect what had just happened and what it might mean. But for now, her mission was clear. Whatever dangers lay ahead, she would face them at Tobias's side. The celestial seraph sailed through the vast darkness of space, leaving the shimmering rings of the Zyrath system behind. The initial excitement of leaving Varelian orbit had faded, and Alindra found herself falling into a familiar state of heightened vigilance, each soft beep and hum of the control panel keeping her attuned to the ship's pulse. It was late, or at least whatever late, meant on a vessel drifting through interstellar night. She had spent the last several hours scouring through the ship's security system, analyzing surveillance footage and running diagnostics on the breaches from their encounter with the unknown attackers. Whoever had ambushed them on Varelian had been equipped with tech as advanced as her own, unusual for simple mercenaries. Something told her they were dealing with a threat much more coordinated and well-funded than she'd anticipated. But this assignment wasn't about her opinion. It was about Tobias Gray, the celebrity-turned-cultural ambassador, who was, as she'd quickly learned, anything but typical. A soft melody drifted through the ship, pulling her attention away from the screen. She recognized the source instantly. Tobias was in the lounge area, seated at a polished keyboard. He was playing something low and wistful the notes floating through the air as if carried by a breeze that wasn't there. The song was haunting, echoing softly through the ship's otherwise sterile silence. Elindra wasn't sure if he knew she was watching, but she could tell he was lost in the music. She didn't interrupt. Music was something Varelians valued highly but approached with solemnity. In her culture, music was a rare ritual, performed only on sacred days, each note imbued with a purpose. But here was Tobias, fingers dancing across the keys with ease, as if he were conjuring magic without a second thought. After a moment, Tobias's gaze lifted, his fingers slowing to a halt as he noticed her presence. You can come closer, you know, he called softly, a half-smile on his lips. I don't bite. Elindra raised an eyebrow, stepping forward with the measured grace of someone who didn't fully understand casual invitations. What are you playing? she asked, keeping her tone neutral, though the music had clearly struck a chord within her. Ah, just something I wrote a while back, he replied, looking down at the keys. It's, well, I guess it's about homesickness, in a way. Longing for something familiar in a place that feels. Anything but. She tilted her head slightly. You seem to enjoy leaving your home behind often, Tobias. You live among the stars, but you write songs about wanting to be elsewhere. He let out a quiet laugh leaning back in his seat. You caught me. But that's the thing about humans. We're complicated. We love the idea of wandering, yet we crave the familiar. I guess it's our way of keeping ourselves from settling, always looking for something out there. She considered his words carefully, the quiet confession catching her off guard. There was a restlessness in him, she realized, a spark that wouldn't let him stay grounded. She had initially dismissed him as frivolous, a charming performer without depth, but each moment spent with him revealed more layers. It was disconcerting. It must be exhausting, she replied finally, her voice softer than usual, to constantly feel pulled in two directions. He looked at her, his gaze more piercing than she expected. Maybe. But it's worth it. His expression shifted, and he smiled. But enough introspection. I don't want to keep you from your duty, Elindra. After all, you seem to take it very seriously. Someone has to, she replied, allowing a hint of dry humor to creep into her voice. She inclined her head slightly. And you, Tobias, should take it seriously as well. Believe me, I do. He leaned forward, his expression growing serious. Look, I know I joke a lot. But what happened back on Varelian? That wasn't just a random attack, was it? Her expression hardened. No and it would be wise to assume we'll face similar threats throughout this tour. Some factions see your influence as a threat to their stability. He sighed, rubbing the back of his neck. You're talking about this diplomatic outreach thing, aren't you? I mean, the idea was mine, but I didn't realize how serious it would get. All I wanted was for humans to have a real seat at the intergalactic table. A noble goal, Elindra replied, but noble goals often make enemies. Just then, an alarm sounded through the ship, a rapid, insistent beep that indicated a security breach. Tobias's face drained of color as he glanced at Alindra. She was already moving, her hand hovering over her sidearm. 
Stay behind me, she commanded, her voice steely. She scanned the control panel, her eyes sharp as she identified the point of entry. They've hacked into the ventilation system. An old trick. Tobias's hands tightened into fists, his posture tense but determined. What can I do? Stay out of sight and do as I say, she replied, her gaze unwavering. I'll handle this. They moved swiftly toward the lower deck, Tobias following a few paces behind, careful not to draw attention to himself. The Celestial Seraph had a state-of-the-art defense system, but the infiltrators had come prepared. Elindra's mind raced, calculating possible countermeasures as they moved through the silent corridors. As they neared the entry point, Tobias halted, his gaze darting around as if he could feel the intruders approaching. Elindra, he whispered, a thread of worry in his voice, are you sure? Before he could finish, a figure dropped down from an overhead vent, clad in dark armor that glinted faintly under the ship's dim lights. Elindra reacted instantly, shifting her weight and raising her weapon in one fluid motion. A shot rang out, but the figure dodged, rolling across the floor and drawing their own weapon. Tobias staggered back, his eyes wide. The intruder lunged forward, but Elindra was faster. She met them head-on, delivering a precise kick that knocked them off balance before disarming them with a calculated twist of her wrist. The attacker went down hard, crumpling to the floor, and Alindra pressed her weapon to their chest. She spoke in a low, measured tone. Who sent you? The attacker's helmet visor lifted just enough to reveal a flash of dark eyes, narrowed with defiance. Your human shouldn't be meddling where he doesn't belong, they hissed. His presence here disrupts the natural order. Elindra's expression didn't change, though her voice grew colder. You're mistaken if you think this mission will end with you. She pressed her weapon a fraction closer, but the figure only laughed, an eerie sound that echoed through the corridor. Others will come, the attacker said, their voice laced with grim satisfaction. No human is worth risking our galaxy's future. You think he's some innocent symbol, but he is a disruption, a breach in our balance. Elindra's grip tightened, but Tobias spoke up, his voice firmer than she expected. And who are you to decide that, he demanded, his usual light-hearted tone gone, replaced by quiet intensity. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm here to bridge worlds. The intruder sneered, but Alindra didn't give them another chance to speak. With a swift motion, she neutralized the threat, leaving the attacker unconscious on the floor. She turned to Tobias, her expression a mask of control, though her heartbeat still pulsed with adrenaline. We need to move, she said curtly. There may be more on board. He nodded, but his gaze lingered on the fallen intruder, a new awareness in his eyes. Elindra, is this what you deal with all the time? She didn't answer immediately, leading him down a narrow corridor toward a safer location. It was only once they were secured in a locked control room that she spoke again. This is part of the life I chose, she said, her voice quieter now. I was trained to expect resistance, to recognize danger and act accordingly. And I do it for those I'm sworn to protect. But I wasn't prepared for this, she admitted, looking at him with a faint trace of vulnerability. Tobias held her gaze. His expression softened by understanding. Maybe we're both out of our depth here, he said, a small, self-deprecating smile on his lips. I thought this whole tour was just about songs and stories but I'm beginning to see that there's a lot more at stake. She watched him carefully, noting the shift in his demeanor. He was no longer the carefree performer she had met. There was a new weight in his eyes, a resolve that had been absent before. We're caught in something larger than either of us, Elindra said softly. But we can't lose sight of the mission. Whatever opposition we face, we must stay focused. For the sake of your people and mine. He nodded, but his gaze lingered on her, as if seeing her for the first time. Elindra, thank you. I know I don't say it enough, but you're more than just a guard to me. You've already saved my life twice, and it's only been a few days. I owe you. She inclined her head, her expression serious. I'm doing my duty, Tobias. Nothing more, nothing less. But even as she said the words, she felt a faint stirring, a hint of something unfamiliar. Tobias Gray was more than a mission. Whether she wanted to admit it or not, she was starting to care, not just as a guard, but as someone drawn to his spirit, his vision, his stubborn resilience. 
He turned back to the control panel, his expression thoughtful. Well then, he said, breaking the tension with a familiar grin, let's make sure your duty doesn't get too boring. She almost smiled at that, a tiny spark of amusement breaking through her usual reserve. I have a feeling that, with you, Tobias, boredom won't be an issue. They settled into a cautious truce, their laughter mingling with the soft hum of the control room, neither of them realizing just how close they were to crossing a line neither one of them had anticipated. The celestial seraph glided into Lux Centauri's orbit, its polished hull reflecting the pale light of a twin star system. Lux Centauri, known as the City of Worlds, was a massive hub floating among asteroid fields and pulsating with alien life, where trade, diplomacy, and spectacle intertwined in a thriving oasis of intergalactic culture. The city's architecture was a marvel. Great curving towers wrapped in webs of silver alloy, shimmering in shades that Alindra had never seen on her home planet. As the ship docked, Tobias pressed his face against the viewport like an eager child, taking in the sight with wide-eyed wonder. Elindra watched him in silence, a faint shadow of a smile tugging at her mouth. Lux Centauri, with its bustling streets and floating bazaars, was a sharp contrast to the disciplined order she was used to on Varelian. But the vibrancy of the city, filled with so many beings from different worlds, held its own beauty. Tobias turned to her, his eyes shining with excitement. This place, it's like nothing I've ever seen. It's almost a shame I'll be stuck performing instead of exploring. Lux Centauri has its dangers, Elindra replied, her voice steady, but her eyes scanning the crowd below with practiced caution. Even more so for someone as recognizable as you. Keep your excitement tempered. This isn't a human concert venue. Your reputation may not carry the same weight here. He shrugged, adjusting his collar with a grin. Guess that's why I've got you to keep me safe. She shot him a look, raising an eyebrow. I'm here to ensure you survive this tour, not to follow your whims. He laughed, brushing off her serious tone with a wave of his hand. Noted, commander. And with that, he winked, breezing past her toward the exit. As they descended onto the docking platform, Elindra's senses went on high alert. The air was thick with scents both exotic and acrid, and a chorus of voices hummed through the space. Traders bargaining, merchants shouting out their wares, dignitaries exchanging diplomatic greetings. Elindra scanned the faces around them, subtly checking for anything unusual. A twinge of unease tightened in her chest. She sensed something more than curiosity in the glances sent Tobias's way. She turned to him. We'll move directly to the venue. Don't linger and don't draw unnecessary attention. Hard to do when you're the biggest rock star in the room, Tobias quipped, a smirk tugging at his mouth. But he fell in line, casting quick glances at the crowds that gathered to watch them pass. They walked together through the shimmering corridors toward the Grand Atrium, a monumental amphitheater suspended within a crystal dome. The space was designed to host interplanetary gatherings and was outfitted with technology from over a dozen species, blending holographic displays with acoustics that could shift in real time to match the performer's tone. Elindra had to admit, it was an impressive sight. As they entered, Tobias took a long, steady breath, his face shifting from amusement to something more serious, more aware. She noted the change, observing the quiet intensity in his eyes. The thought crossed her mind that Tobias might, despite his light-hearted manner, carry the weight of this mission as deeply as she did. But as they approached the stage, a shiver of unease prickled across her skin. She sensed movement in the shadows near the edge of the dome, a flicker of motion too subtle for most eyes to catch. Years of training kicked in, and she leaned in close to Tobias. We're not alone, she murmured, her hand drifting to the hilt of her weapon. He stiffened but kept his face neutral, his voice low. What do you want me to do? Stay calm, she instructed, eyes narrowed. If I tell you to run, you run. Trust that I'll cover you. But before he could respond, a sharp, blinding light flooded the stage. Elindra's vision blurred for a moment, and she cursed under her breath as she shielded her eyes. The crowd erupted into panicked murmurs, and the alien dignitaries in the front row shifted uneasily. A distorted voice crackled through the speakers, filling the air with a chilling resonance. Attention! Lux Centauri! We come with a message from the Exclusionist Coalition. The human known as Tobias Gray is a threat to interstellar stability. Remove him, and no harm will come to your people. Tobias's face paled, 
but he quickly masked his fear with a calm facade. I didn't realize I was so important. You should take them seriously, Elindra replied, her voice sharp. They are not bluffing. Several cloaked figures emerged from the shadows, their faces obscured, weapons raised. The crowd scattered in alarm, but Tobias held his ground beside Alindra, his fists clenched. Get down, she hissed, stepping in front of him as the attackers closed in. She moved with flawless precision, her blade flashing in quick, decisive arcs as she took down the first two mercenaries. Tobias ducked behind her, his breath quickening as he watched her move with lethal efficiency. The next wave of attackers descended from above, dropping onto the stage with weapons drawn. Elindra didn't hesitate, diving into the fray with calculated intensity. She was outnumbered, but her movements were swift, each strike fluid and unrelenting. Tobias couldn't tear his gaze away. She fought like a force of nature, every step purposeful, every blow precise. One of the cloaked figures lunged at him, and before Elindra could intercept, Tobias ducked, instinctively kicking out to throw the attacker off balance. The mercenary staggered back, and Tobias took the opportunity to grab a metal rod from the equipment rack, holding it defensively. His stance was far from refined, but there was a raw determination in his gaze, and Alindra felt an unexpected surge of pride. Not bad for a rock star, she muttered, dispatching another assailant with a swift, well-aimed strike. Years of stage experience, he replied, a nervous grin flashing across his face as he raised the rod. But before he could say more, a blast of energy struck the stage, scattering debris and filling the air with smoke. Elindra pulled him behind a support beam, her expression fierce. You need to stay down. We can't afford for you to be caught in the crossfire. He nodded, but as he crouched beside her, his eyes hardened. This is more than just a concert, isn't it? Yes, she said, glancing at him briefly before her gaze returned to the stage. You're more than just a symbol of goodwill to these people. To those who fear change, you represent a threat, a bridge between worlds that they want to burn. Before he could respond, the exclusionist leader's voice crackled through the speakers again. Your defiance only brings ruin. Hand over the human, or we will destroy the city of worlds. A tense silence filled the air, and Tobias looked at her, his eyes dark and resolved. I'm not going to be the reason they hurt innocent people. Elindra's jaw tightened. Your life is valuable, Tobias. Sacrificing yourself is not the solution. But Tobias met her gaze with unexpected intensity. If I don't stand up for what I believe in now, then what's the point of this tour? What's the point of any of it? She searched his face, seeing the flicker of conviction that mirrored her own sense of duty. She hadn't expected to find that strength in him. A strength not born of physical prowess, but of unwavering resolve. It was a quality she recognized, a trait that resonated with her own guarded heart. Then we make our stand together, she said, her voice soft but resolute. Follow my lead. Together, they stepped out from behind the support beam, facing the group of cloaked figures who had paused, watching them with cold, assessing eyes. Elindra raised her weapon, her stance strong and unyielding. Tobias Gray is under the protection of Varelian Royal Guard, she announced, her voice carrying across the amphitheater. Any attempt on his life will be met with force. The exclusionist leader stepped forward, his face obscured by a metal visor that flickered with eerie blue light. You're making a foolish choice, guard. Our coalition spans systems. We will outlast your resistance. She held his gaze, her voice steady. You underestimate my resolve. With that, the fight resumed, fiercer than before. The coalition forces moved in with renewed aggression, their weapons flashing as they attacked in coordinated waves. Elindra met them head-on, her focus narrowing as she blocked each strike, parried each blow. She felt Tobias close beside her, holding his ground, his presence a reminder of why she fought. The tide of the battle shifted as Luxentori's security forces arrived, their advanced weapons scattering the remaining attackers. Elindra watched as the coalition fighters retreated, their leader's gaze lingering on her with a look of thinly veiled hatred. This isn't over, he spat, his voice cold. Your human won't survive the galaxy's wrath. Then, in a flash of light, he and his followers vanished, retreating into the shadows of Lux Centauri. When the last of the mercenaries had disappeared, Elindra turned to Tobias, her breathing steady but her gaze fierce. Are you hurt? 
He shook his head, brushing dust from his shoulders. Just a bit rattled, he admitted, his grin returning. But I think I held my own. She gave him a nod of approval, her expression softening. You showed courage. It's more than most could have done. He shrugged, a flicker of humility in his eyes. Maybe. But I wouldn't have made it without you. For a moment, they stood there in the silence of the now empty amphitheater, the weight of their ordeal settling over them. Elindra felt an unexpected warmth as she looked at him. This human, who had faced danger without hesitation, who carried an unwavering optimism that clashed with her own guarded nature. Tobias, she said quietly, her voice almost a whisper, you must understand that this path you've chosen, it will only grow more dangerous. He looked at her, his gaze unwavering. I know. But I have a feeling I'm where I need to be. Something softened in her expression. Then I will stand by you. Whatever lies ahead. He extended a hand to her, a silent invitation, his eyes earnest. She hesitated only a moment before taking it, the warmth of his hand grounding her in a way she hadn't anticipated. Together then, he said, his smile steady. Together, she replied, a faint smile breaking through her usual reserve. In that moment, amid the ruins of the battle and the vastness of Luxentori, a bond was forged, one built not on duty alone, but on shared purpose and the promise of a fight that was far from over. The celestial seraph drifted through the gentle currents of deep space, en route to Sorrel Prime, a diplomatic hub that floated near the core worlds. The ship was quiet, the hum of its engines a constant, comforting sound that filled the silence. Tobias had taken to watching the stars from his cabin's viewport, an almost meditative ritual he'd fallen into since the attack at Lux Centauri. The vastness of space had always stirred something deep within him, a blend of awe, restlessness, and longing that no earthbound stage could ever satisfy. Elindra watched him from the doorway, unnoticed. There was a change in him, she realized, an awareness that hadn't been there before. Gone was the wide-eyed wonder from their first few days together, replaced by a steadiness that surprised her. He was learning, evolving under the weight of each encounter, and she found herself admiring the depth beneath his charm. She cleared her throat, and Tobias turned, breaking into a small smile. Caught me daydreaming again, huh? he said, his voice lighter than his expression. You're allowed to daydream, Elindra replied, stepping into the room. But I thought you might want to review the security measures I've prepared for Sorrel Prime. He nodded, but there was a distant look in his eyes. Yeah, sure, bring it on. I should be ready, right? He turned back to the viewport, his gaze drifting again as he added, It's strange though, all of this. I've spent my life trying to connect with people, to bring them together with music, and now I'm a target. Elindra approached, her gaze steady as she observed him. That's precisely why you're a target. Your voice, your influence, carries weight. For every mind you open, there are others who feel threatened, whose beliefs are shaken. They see you as a symbol of disruption. He was quiet for a moment, nodding slowly. Yeah. I just didn't realize how lonely it would feel. He looked at her, a softness in his eyes. Thanks for being here, Elindra. I don't know if I've said it enough, but I'd be a mess without you. She hesitated, unprepared for the warmth that spread through her at his words. I'm doing my duty, she said quietly. And I am grateful to be here as well. He smiled at that, something unspoken passing between them, before Elindra cleared her throat, her professional demeanor returning. Now, the security measures, she began, spreading a hollow map of Sorrel Prime between them on a nearby table. Sorrel Prime's diplomats are offering full protection, but I've secured backup protocols in case we encounter resistance. The Diplomatic Council has arranged a gathering in your honor, which will give us limited mobility and more potential threats. Got it, he said, his tone steadier now as he absorbed her words. So we'll have a quick exit route if things go wrong? Precisely, she replied, pointing to an energy field surrounding the main venue. This is our point of vulnerability. If there's any interference, we'll be separated from the transport bays. I'll be posted by your side at all times, but we must stay alert. Tobias leaned over the map, his brow furrowing. I never thought I'd be planning escape routes for my shows. Consider it part of the experience, she replied dryly, her mouth twitching with a hint of a smile. 
They both laughed softly, the sound easing the tension that had settled over the room. For a moment, Tobias looked at her, and she noticed a question in his gaze, one he seemed hesitant to voice. What is it? she asked, raising an eyebrow. He shook his head, but then stopped, as if deciding he couldn't brush it off. Elindra, why did you become a guard? His voice was soft, genuine. I mean, I can tell you're incredibly good at it, but why this life? She hesitated, caught off guard. In all her years as a royal guard, no one had ever asked her why. Her role was her duty, her purpose, and in Varelian culture, questions of motivation were often unnecessary. But there was something about Tobias's gaze that softened her usual defenses, something that made her want to answer. When I was young, she began, her voice low, my family was ordinary. Farmers. We lived on the edge of the capital province. I remember a night, there was a raid, a group of rebels who opposed the ruling class. I was small, barely old enough to understand what was happening, but I remember the fear. My father, he didn't survive. Tobias's face softened, his eyes filled with sympathy, but he remained silent, letting her continue. A patrol unit arrived after it was over. They fought back the rebels, protected the remaining families, she said, her voice growing steadier. That's when I knew I wanted to become a guard. I wanted to be one of those who could protect the helpless, those who would put themselves in harm's way to keep others safe. It was my way of giving my life purpose. Tobias nodded slowly, his voice quiet. And you have. You're one of the bravest people I've ever met, Elindra. A faint flush crept over her cheeks, and she looked away. It is a life of duty, she replied simply. Nothing more. But he reached out, his hand gently brushing hers, and she felt her heart stutter at the warmth of his touch. It's more than that. I know it is. She met his gaze, feeling a mixture of emotions she couldn't quite name. But before she could respond, the ship's intercom blared to life, the sudden sound breaking the moment. Captain Gray and Guard Alindra, we're approaching Sorrel Prime. Prepare for docking. Tobias pulled back, nodding, his face shifting back to a mask of composure. Right. Showtime. Sorrel Prime was unlike any world Tobias had seen. The sky was an ethereal violet, stretching out over towering spires of crystal and metal that caught the sunlight in a blaze of color. The entire city seemed to be in motion, with airborne vehicles gliding seamlessly between towers and walkways that glowed with embedded lights. The diplomatic hall was nestled in the heart of the city, a structure of intricate design that sparkled like a beacon in the center of it all. As they made their way through the crowded plaza leading to the hall, Elindra kept Tobias close, her gaze scanning every face, every shadow, with unwavering vigilance. The security presence was strong, but she knew the exclusionists could strike in a thousand unexpected ways. Tobias noticed her tension and offered a small smile. Relax, Elindra. I know you've got this. She shot him a look. Confidence is useful, Tobias, but vigilance is essential. They reached the diplomatic hall, where a group of dignitaries awaited them. Each wore robes adorned with various symbols and colors, their eyes filled with curiosity as they appraised Tobias. One of the diplomats, a tall figure with silver hair and deep-set eyes, stepped forward, extending a hand in greeting. Welcome, Tobias Gray, he intoned, his voice rich and cultured. We are honored by your presence. I am Chancellor Viren. Tobias shook his hand, his voice gracious. Thank you, Chancellor. I'm honored to be here. As the formalities unfolded, Elindra's gaze never wavered from the crowd, her instincts heightened. Chancellor Viren was speaking, guiding Tobias into the hall, when she caught a flicker of movement in the upper balcony, a shadow slipping through the edge of the ceiling's support beams. Tobias, she whispered, her voice low but firm. Stay close. We may have company. He tensed but didn't look up, trusting her instincts without question. They continued down the hall, but Alindra's eyes tracked the shadow, her hand hovering over her weapon as they moved. The group reached a large open space in the center of the hall, and the diplomats gathered in a loose circle around Tobias. Tonight, Chancellor Viren declared, his voice carrying through the hall, we welcome Tobias Gray of Earth, an emissary of peace and unity among worlds. A murmur of approval rippled through the crowd, and Tobias gave a small nod, his expression both gracious and reserved. 
But Alindra's attention remained on the balcony, her instinct screaming as she caught another flash of movement. Then, without warning, a series of bright, concussive blasts erupted along the edges of the hall, sending shockwaves through the crowd. The guests scattered in terror, and Alindra's hand was on Tobias's shoulder, pulling him down as she shielded him from the blasts. Stay low, she ordered, her voice barely audible over the panicked screams. Several figures emerged from the smoke, their forms cloaked and faces obscured by dark visors. One of them stepped forward, a weapon aimed directly at Tobias. Tobias Gray, the figure called, his voice filled with malice. Surrender now, or watch these dignitaries suffer in your name. Elindra's grip tightened on her weapon, her gaze cold and unflinching as she assessed the attackers. You won't get to him, she said, her voice like steel. The leader laughed, his visor glinting. You're just a guard, Varelian, one of many who have fallen in this war. Tobias straightened, his face set in defiance. Whatever you want with me, I won't be a part of your hatred. The leader took a step closer, his weapon steady. You already are, human. Without hesitation, Elindra lunged forward, her blade slicing through the air as she moved with deadly precision. The fight erupted around them, flashes of light and bursts of energy illuminating the chaos. Elindra moved like a storm, each strike calculated, each movement fluid as she defended Tobias with every ounce of her strength. Tobias grabbed a fallen metal rod, using it to deflect an attacker's weapon as he fought beside her, his resolve unwavering. Amid the chaos, the exclusionist leader snarled, directing his weapon at Alindra. Tobias noticed, his heart pounding as he saw the danger too late. But Alindra met the leader's gaze without fear. She shifted, blocking Tobias from the weapon's aim even as the blast hit her side. She staggered, her face pale, but she stayed on her feet, her blade flashing as she took down the leader with one final powerful strike. When the last attacker fell, Tobias dropped the metal rod, turning to Alindra with panic in his eyes. Elindra, you're hurt. She looked down, blood seeping through her armor, but she waved him off. It's nothing. A superficial wound. He reached out, concern written across his face. We need to get you help. But she shook her head, her voice soft. I'm a guard, Tobias. I am meant to protect. Even at a cost. He held her gaze, his face filled with a mixture of gratitude and pain. You don't have to do this alone, he said, his voice barely more than a whisper. Let me be there for you too. For the first time, she allowed herself to feel the warmth of his words, the depth of the bond that had formed between them. And though she said nothing, a part of her knew that she would protect him not out of duty alone but because he had become more than just a mission. He was her purpose, her reason, and for him, she would fight any enemy, no matter the cost. The celestial seraph was unusually quiet, a reflective silence settling over the ship as it hurtled through the void of space, heading for a safe haven in the Verdex cluster. After the ambush on Sorrel Prime, both Tobias and Elindra needed to recover, and regroup. Elindra's injury had slowed her, but she had managed to convince Tobias not to seek immediate medical intervention. It was, as she'd insisted, not serious enough to delay their mission. But as they approached the cluster's outskirts, the tension between them was palpable. They met in the ship's main control room, where Tobias sat hunched over a data terminal, studying the galaxy's map. The frustration etched into his face was undeniable, his hand tracing the unfamiliar star routes as if looking for answers. Elindra watched him from the doorway, her presence quiet but charged with intent. She could sense the weight he carried the doubt and responsibility that had begun to settle over him. She took a slow breath and stepped into the room. Tobias looked up, his expression softening at the sight of her. I didn't hear you come in, he said, attempting a smile, though the worry in his eyes betrayed him. Apologies. I've learned to move quietly, she replied, her voice gentle. She hesitated, choosing her next words carefully. You're troubled. He gave a small, rueful laugh. That obvious, huh? She crossed the room, her gaze steady and unblinking. Tobias, you're not responsible for the actions of others. The exclusionist's anger, that is not yours to carry. He looked away, shaking his head. But that's the problem, isn't it? All I wanted was to bring people together, to show them that humanity has a place among the stars. And instead, 
I've put lives in danger. Yours, Chancellor Virens, even innocent bystanders. Elindra reached out, her hand resting on his shoulder with a surprising tenderness. Your vision is noble, Tobias. But any great change brings risk. You knew that, whether or not you were prepared to face it. He met her gaze, his expression intense. But why? Why are they so afraid of me, of us? She let her hand fall, her expression darkening. Fear has always been the strongest force in the galaxy. It keeps worlds apart, breeds isolation. To people like the exclusionists, you represent disruption, a bridge they don't want crossed. Tobias nodded slowly, absorbing her words. So, what do we do? Just keep running from them, hoping they don't catch up. Elindra's gaze grew sharper, more determined. We do the opposite. We make a stand. The strength in her voice sent a jolt through him. She didn't look away, her posture confident and unwavering. For the first time since their journey began, he saw her not just as a guard, but as a partner, someone willing to face whatever dangers lay ahead with him, shoulder to shoulder. She moved to the control panel, pressing a series of keys, and the map of the Verdex cluster appeared on the main screen. This region is unregulated, neutral space, she said. There's a world here, Serena, a safe place, known to be a sanctuary for those seeking refuge from political conflict. If we get there, we can make contact with allies, find a way to push back. Tobias studied the map, his eyes narrowed. What about the exclusionists? Her expression didn't falter. They'll follow, no doubt. But Serena has its own defenses, and we have allies who can help us. The exclusionists won't be able to act as freely there. We'll be able to regroup, plan our next move. A spark of hope ignited in his eyes. Then let's go. I'm tired of running. Serena was unlike any world Tobias had seen. The planet's surface was a verdant maze of forests and shimmering lakes. Its cities nestled among towering trees and woven seamlessly into the natural landscape. It was a place of serenity, a stark contrast to the tension that had followed them through every system. They arrived at night, the sky a deep, twilight blue, the air filled with the fragrance of unfamiliar flora and the soft hum of nocturnal creatures. As they disembarked, Elindra led him through a series of quiet, winding pathways, eventually guiding him to a large, open plaza. Alien statues lined the perimeter, figures that seemed to glow with an inner light, casting a warm radiance across the clearing. At the center of the plaza stood a tall, crystalline monument that refracted starlight into every corner of the space. This place, Tobias murmured, his gaze filled with awe. It's beautiful, almost sacred. Elindra nodded, her expression reverent. Serena is a world of peace, a sanctuary for those who seek refuge from the galaxy's conflicts. We are fortunate to be here. A voice interrupted them, smooth and resonant. Fortunate indeed. Few come to Serena seeking to stand against tyranny. Tobias turned, seeing an elderly figure approach. The alien was draped in robes of silver and blue, his skin a deep shade of indigo with markings that glowed faintly in the dim light. His eyes, luminous and ancient, met Tobias's with a sense of understanding. Welcome, the figure said, bowing slightly. I am Aelin, a keeper of this sanctuary. I know why you've come, and I wish to aid you. Tobias and Elindra exchanged glances. Elindra stepped forward, inclining her head respectfully. We are grateful for your assistance, Keeper. The exclusionists are relentless. We need allies. Aelin nodded. They are powerful, yes, but they do not know the ways of Serena. Here you are safe. If you remain cautious. Tobias looked at Aelin, his voice tentative but sincere. And why help us? You barely know us. The Keeper's expression softened. Because peace is more than the absence of conflict. It is the courage to stand for unity, to defy fear and division. Your presence here, Tobias Gray, carries a ripple of change. The galaxy needs more ripples like yours. Tobias felt a lump in his throat, overwhelmed by the Keeper's words. Elindra placed a hand on his shoulder, her voice a quiet reassurance. You see, Tobias, your presence means something here. Let that give you strength. But even as they spoke, Elindra's senses remained alert. Her hand hovered near her weapon, 
her gaze flicking over the darkened edges of the plaza. Though Serena was a place of refuge, she knew that no sanctuary was beyond the reach of those willing to break its rules. As if to confirm her fears, a distant rumble echoed through the plaza, a low, foreboding sound that sent a shiver down her spine. Tobias tensed, his gaze snapping toward her. Elindra. What was that? She drew her weapon, her expression grim. They're here. Without hesitation, Elindra moved to stand between Tobias and the direction of the sound, her posture rigid with readiness. Aelin held up a hand, summoning a barrier of shimmering light around them. Exclusionists dare not violate Serena's peace lightly, Aelin murmured, his voice calm. But they may yet try. Stand firm, and we will face them together. Figures emerged from the shadows, cloaked in the familiar dark robes of the exclusionists. Their leader stepped forward, his face obscured but his stance filled with malice. Tobias Gray, he called, his voice echoing across the plaza. Your presence here defies the natural order. Surrender, or face the consequences. Elindra's voice rang out, clear and defiant. You will not touch him. Not here. The leader's gaze turned to her, a sneer audible in his tone. Your loyalty to this human is misplaced, Varelian. The exclusionists will cleanse this galaxy of his kind. Tobias stepped forward, his chin lifted. You talk of cleansing, but it's just fear, isn't it? You're afraid of what we could accomplish together. The leader's weapon crackled to life, but Alindra stepped between them, her blade gleaming under the starlight. You'll have to go through me first. The exclusionists charged, their figures a blur of shadow and movement. Elindra moved with deadly precision, her every strike a calculated blow. Tobias fought beside her, using a small shield Aelin had given him to deflect attacks, his movements guided by instinct and determination. The plaza was filled with bursts of energy, flashes of light, and the clash of metal. Elindra moved like a storm, her strength and agility unmatched as she held the line, her focus unwavering. She fought not just as a guard, but as an equal, a partner willing to give everything to protect what mattered most. Beside her, Tobias felt the rush of adrenaline and fear, but also a deep resolve. This was more than self-defense, it was a stand for unity, for a future that transcended the borders and prejudices he'd seen in the galaxy. As the fight reached its peak, the exclusionist leader lunged toward Alindra, his weapon aimed at her heart. Tobias saw the movement a split second before she did, and without hesitation, he threw himself between them, raising his shield. The blast ricocheted off, sending him sprawling, but sparing her. Elindra turned, her face filled with shock and fury as she dispatched the exclusionist with a final, decisive strike. She knelt beside Tobias, her eyes wide with worry. Tobias, are you? He laughed breathlessly, wincing as he sat up. I'm fine. Just needed to give you a hand. Her face softened, a faint smile breaking through her usual reserve. You fool. You didn't need to do that. He looked at her, his expression earnest. Yes, I did. I'd do it again. Aelin stepped forward, his voice calm amid the aftermath. The exclusionists have retreated. Their actions will not go unpunished in Serena. Elindra helped Tobias to his feet, her hand lingering on his shoulder. They exchanged a look, one filled with relief, gratitude, and a depth of emotion that had grown over the course of their journey. They stood together in the quiet of the plaza, the night air cool around them. Aelin's voice was soft but certain as he spoke. The bond you share is rare in the galaxy. Hold on to it, for it will give you strength in the battles yet to come. Elindra turned to Tobias, her voice quiet. He's right. Whatever lies ahead, we'll face it together. He took her hand, a sense of peace settling over him despite the dangers they still faced. Together. And as they stood beneath the stars, their hands intertwined, they knew that whatever challenges awaited, they had found something stronger than fear, something that even the vastness of the galaxy could not break.